time as well. Look, look at oh, that. that. That works nicely. I've actually started to learn technology a little bit. About time. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I'm not joking, Dora. It, no, it's true. It's true, though, Jason. It is true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I'm absolutely useless. Don't worry about that. But, well, excuse the hair anyway, everybody. It looks all right, to be fair. You, I, I, I remember when I dyed my hair blonde about a year ago, and it looked a lot more ginger than what yours does. So I think you've done an all right job. Oh, cheers, Jace. Yeah, that's, that's my mum. And um, pur purple shampoo, apparently. That's that's the way forward. Yes, yeah, I forgot to do that. That's probably why mine, mine went really ginger. So yeah. I'll remember that for next time. <laughs> yeah, quality. Right, you 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 met you met oh, you two, haven't you? Sorry, what's that? You two have met, haven't you? Cal? Yeah, we haven't met in person at all yet, me and Cal. Oh, no, how are you doing, Cal? You're right. No, buddy, how are you, Jason? Yeah, I'm doing all right actually. I only woke up about an hour ago, so I'm still a little bit tired, but no, <laughs> oh, it is what it is. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? Yeah, what's up, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, ready when you are, Si. Yeah, yeah, yeah go, go for it, Cal. Yeah, all yours. He's the main <laughs> man. No. Right, <laughs> uh, yeah, so hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of Simple and the Dragon podcast. Um, we've got a very, very special guest today. We've got uh, Jason Davenport on. How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing fantastic. How are you both doing today? Doing all right, thank you. Yep, doing well. Thanks, Jace. All good okay. now. I had a morning for a day, but I'm all right now, so. <laughs> good, good. Good, good, that is. Um, so, yes, um, I've got some questions from Instagram, Jason, for you. Fantastic, yeah, I'd love to hear them. Love, love to... And the first one is going to be, um, what got you into TikTok? Oh, that's an interesting one, because I think there's lots of different reasons to why I pursued TikTok the way that I did. Um, it was quite interesting, because I started off, I don't know if you have seen my early videos, but I started off um, making TikToks in Sainsbury's uniform. I do Sainsbury's TikToks where I'd do things like do um, customer service announcements. Like, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, this is a customer announcement. And those would get millions of views. I don't know how or why, but people really enjoyed me doing those. Um, and I'd also do other um, like comedy sketch videos in Sainsbury's uniform. Um, but eventually, my manager found out and uh, she saw all the TikToks. And some of them were like not corresponding to the social media guidelines of Sainsbury's or whatever. <laughs> um, so I actually got um, sacked. Well, I got um, uh, suspended and then sacked furthermore, um, which made me not know what to kind of do with myself. So I kind of just started posting TikToks because I thought it was quite a fun way of, of, of doing things. And luckily enough, it kind of worked itself out to the situation I'm in now. And yeah, I'm, I'm very thankful for it. That's brilliant. That, that Sainsbury's got to sack you because you was doing that with a uniform. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. There was a few like specific ones that were like um, specifically bad for whatever reason. Um, I think there was one where I had age restricted products behind me, and because of the way that my TikTok was presented, it looked like I was trying to advertise it. Obviously, I wasn't, um, yeah. but to advertise an age restricted product on like an open media, open social media platform is actually like illegal or something. <laughs> um, so technically I was breaking a law and that's kind of why it, it happened and yeah it, was, it wasn't the best but it got me to where I am now so well yeah fair play to Sainsbury's it's got you here isn't it so. <laughs> exactly exactly I can't complain too much oh dear <laughs> oh. They, they, they probably regret it now they probably still want you there they might get some more customers in exactly you know I, mean? I might be able to advertise their platform but yeah exactly yeah, I, 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 I'm sure I'm, they're just corresponding whatever their guidelines are so I can understand why they would do it but not too fast yeah no, no, that's great. So how, how long have you been doing it, Jace? Um, TikTok in, in, in a whole. Um, yeah. Well, I start, this, the account I've got right now, I started in, um, it was the 17th of November was my first video. I have had accounts before that, but they were kind of like just silly accounts, you know, like personal accounts that you kind of make just to kind of like watch TikToks, maybe post one here, here and there. But I never took it seriously. I never posted a video with the intention of it getting loads of views from loads of random people. Um, but yeah, then I made this kind of new account, which is more kind of like, um, stuff like I, I think I got bored in the, one of the lockdowns. One, I think it was when you were in like step four or stage four, whatever it was. Um, and I was, I was, I was getting a bit bored, so I decided to make some TikToks, make a few people laugh. Mostly just my friends at the time, and started off. No one really else followed me other than people that I was mates with. Um, but then, yeah, it followed on furthermore to now having a, a really wide and ranged audience from people all around the world. And I still don't believe it myself, but it is what it is. <laughs> Mm. That's mad. So you've got over two million followers from under just under a year. 
Like, yeah, about seven to eight months, I think it almost like, almost almost eight months. That's mad. Absolutely. Yeah. Mad. Yeah, it's crazy. I still don't believe it, but I'm here where I'm here, so good. Yeah, doing well, yeah, brilliant. So good. Yeah. I'd like to say, Jason, congrats on two million as well. I oh, appreciate it, mate. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I only heard it a couple of days ago, I think, so I uh, still get my head around it. <laughs> yeah, mad. you're doing brilliant. I really tell you, I enjoy your content so much. It's really good. I oh, appreciate it, mate. That, so it's, 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 it's words of affirmation like that that make me want to make more content like I do. And it's seeing comments in my in my videos that they're all saying, oh, please make more, please make more. It just puts a smile to my face and it makes me like inclined to want to make more because just loving the reactions on it. It's just, it's just amazing. It is. Um, yeah, have, you, you've watched, haven't you, Simon, as well? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll watch, I'll watch all Jason's, yeah. It just, <laughs> it's, it, it's really good. That, that's, what, that's what's so good about TikTok, isn't it? Is that you can, when you do videos, you, you feel like you, you're sort of you know, cheering people up, helping people and all the rest of it. And that, that's what it's about deep down, really, isn't it? Um, you know, it's when, when we, you know, when we go on live, people say, oh, I love your lives, you know, you, you make me evening, you know, it's something to look forward to. Do you know what I mean? But that's, that's, that's what we're, we're all trying to do, isn't it? Just to help exactly. people as much as we can. For sure. You've got a spot on. And, and your videos are just um, always cheerful, aren't they? <laughs> You're always having a laugh with it, so. Yeah, there's, it's, there's always got a, a smile on people's faces usually when they watch it, so it's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's brilliant. Brilliant. And uh, uh, it's, just, it's just great when, you, you know, you get called an inspiration and stuff, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, don't even get me started. Like, I can't even comprehend all these compliments. I'm really bad at taking compliments. So when, when someone says, oh, your video is amazing, I just kind of say, oh, thank you. I'm just doing kind of what I think is right. And the fact that you guys are enjoying it is amazing. But like, I don't I didn't intend for this to happen. Um, so it's, it's still a bit of a culture shock uh, for myself. But I'm getting over it now. So yeah, it's just, just trying to get my head around the numbers. It's crazy. Yeah. It's mad. Fantastic, that. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, that's a cracking answer, by the way. That is, <laughs> Cheers. um, so yeah, the next one is, um, is a good one. Um, of course, you, you had the content ballers game, which you played in. Of course. Um, how did you, uh, rate the game? How did you think it went in your perspective? I think, okay, I, I can rate it in two ways. I can rate my own performance and I can rate how the event went. So I think for my own performance, I think I surprised a lot of people because obviously I don't have any football, much football content on my account. So people probably didn't think I played much football. But then when they came to on the pitch, I think I, I, I turned a few heads. Like people didn't really expect to see much out of me and then I kind of performed quite well. In terms of how I feel like I, I played compared to how I think I could normally play, I probably played very average. I could have probably played better. But then again, I, I haven't played centre-back for quite a long time. As you might know, I'm, I'm a goalkeeper for, my, for a local team. Um, so I don't really play outfield that often. Um, but the fact that I got to play centre back, and I think I fit quite well into the team. Like after, I think the first five ten minutes were a bit shaky because we didn't really know what to do. But then after that, we kind of like learned each other's attributes and how to work well with each other. Um, and I think we we played really well. In fact, I think the last forty minutes, I don't think we conceded a single goal. We were very solid at the back. We kind of learned um, how to communicate and stuff, and it worked really well. Um, and then in terms of the event as a whole. I'd say in terms of bringing together all these amazing TikTokers from one side of the British Isles with, with um, Kyle and, and oh, everyone, it, it was incredible. Um, I think if I could rate that at all, I'd say that it's probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest TikTok event that I think will ever happen this year. And we're only waiting for the next one to happen to overpass that. And possibly if we get a bigger stadium, we get some more familiar faces, we could make it an even better and more incredible experience than the first one was. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think um, when the supporters are allowed back in as well, if we can get one up north in, you know, in, in a decent ground, I think I think we're going to get lots and lots of people there. I mean, there was um, five five hundred thousand people watching the stream on that. It, yeah, in, exactly. in, all, in all different places, it was just uh, absolutely amazing. But um, I, I thought you'd done brilliant, Jace. Actually, I was I was quite surprised myself. I was yeah. quite surprised with. Um, with a lot of players, actually, I when they asked me to manage it, I was like, okay, you know, it's going to be a bit of fun and all the rest of it. But God, there's um, there's some decent players there, and like you said, once we sussed everything out and we knew who's who's best in each position, and then it started really um, 
it started really going well for us, didn't it? Yeah, I think if we played like we did in that second half throughout the whole game, I reckon we could have easily have scored probably three or four um, past them, or be three or four goals in front of them. I mean, um, I, I do think that I, I think after the second half, well, after we learned how each other played and how you obviously managed the, the game as well as you did, uh, allowed us to play some really good football, and obviously we ended up with that last minute goal, which uh, still, still is. Whenever I see the replay back, even to this day, it's, it's an incredible feeling. Like last like ninety sixth minute or whatever it was, it was insane. Yeah. Mm. It could have got, it couldn't have gone any better for everybody, really, could it? Exactly. What happened? So, it was the even game, last minute penalties. I mean, it was just, just amazing, wasn't it? So, for sure, for sure. No, I'm still happy that I took part in it, for sure. And then next time, big cow the dragon getting up in there, <laughs> wasn't it, Cal? Will be, yes. I'm excited to see that for sure. That'd be good. Well, the thing is, Jason, I can play goalkeeper and outfield. Oh, of course, yeah. You might have to go up top for the uh, the North team and like. If if Harry Kane gets injured, then you might need to quickly fill in for him. I think you've got the skill to to keep up with him, so I'm sure you'd make a good replacement. Appreciate that. Yeah, because <laughs> right. I play I play up front for my for my team that I play for. Oh yeah, I've seen a couple of clips of you playing, isn't it? Isn't it like Codden or, or Cod, Cod, I don't oh, know how you know. So, um, yeah, yeah, I saw a couple of uh, yeah. My debut goals. training session, debut training session, I scored a hat trick on my debut. That's impressive. That doesn't just happen any day. That's 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 really good stuff. Well done, mate. Cheers for that, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But to be honest, mate, I think you're a top quality and player. You are. I think you really that your quality. I appreciate that, mate. I mean, I I love hearing all this stuff because obviously I don't really do much football content on my on my TikTok. So whenever people see me in real life, and they're like, oh my god, you're actually quite good. So it's really surprising. I'm, I'm I'm always shocked to hear it. So I'm really thankful for words like you you said just then. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you played really well in that Chatham game as well. I think um, I played all right in the first half, but I got so tired in the second half because I, I, I took part in that game. I think I, it was about a week ago that I was still in isolation from having COVID. So my lungs were just completely gone. I couldn't really breathe very well in that second half. I was battling through it. I was, I was recovering quite well. Every time the ball went out, I'd make sure I just pant it off almost. Um, but yeah, no, it, I, I think I managed quite well in the first half. I felt like I kept up with quite a lot of the good players as well, which was even surprising for myself. Yeah, definitely was. How do you feel play partnership with Jack Fowler? That's pretty decent, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we played really well. When when we, when Jack wasn't injured and it was me and him at centre back, I think we played really well. I think we only let in like a. I think we might have only let in one goal, to be honest. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I think we played really well. I think I learned how to play quite well in that position on the left hand side of centre half. And um, I, I'd look I'd look forward to doing something similar like that in the future as well. I think it was a really good experience, both for me and the other people that were on the pitch. Well, I will. I mean, if we did any more come up, I'll be giving you a shout, that's for sure. So, that's fantastic. I'd love to hear it. Maybe right. we can get up front for a couple of minutes as well, maybe score some goals for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Cal will be in the next one as well, won't you, Cal? Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, well, you've got uh, that one's been held yearly, haven't you? The goals for Gosh one. That's yeah. uh, yearly, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah, probably good, actually. As well. I yeah, we'll look forward to either taking part or what. Absolutely. And it's, I can't wait for, for the next one. But I was watching the Chapman one and I was like, goodness me, you, you, you're really solid at the bat, I really tell you. I appreciate it, cheers. I think I think I definitely was at the start. I think I, I was I was even impressed by myself at how well I played it with all these amazing players. But obviously, mm. yeah, towards the end, I got a bit tired. And I think I, it was right for me to get subbed off. I think it was 20 minutes towards the end. Um, do, do, do you play for someone now, Jace, did you say? Yeah, I play in golf like a local team. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like a university team. Okay, we're playing a league and all that. Yeah, it's like the so I live in Cambridge. It's like the Cambridgeshire, like it's like the third division of Cambridgeshire. So it's 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 fair. It's, it's all right. Yeah, well, that's good. At least you're you're doing something. It's still getting staying involved, isn't it? That's the main exactly, thing. Exactly. Yeah, as long as I'm in, in around like people and the, the environment, then yeah, I'm always going to want to keep playing football. So yeah, mm. that's good. have you got a question, Sai? Yeah, well, going on to that. I mean, who, who did you play for when you was younger? Did you have you always played in goal? Did you play out on pitch, or is there a certain team you played for? <laughs> I've played everywhere. I've honestly, I used to when I first started wanting to play football. Obviously, as most people do, they want to be a scorer, a top goal scorer. So they play up front and they play uh, left wing, right wing, anywhere where you can kind of get involved and get goals and get assists. Um, but then I kind of realised, I think it was when I started growing as well, because I, I was I was always really tiny when I was growing up. I don't think I even grew until I was maybe in year 11 so up until the age of like 16 I was always like one of the shortest I was maybe five foot 
three or four. Like really not very tall compared to the rest of the, the, the men or boys that I'd be playing with. Um, but there was a stage where I'd play for a, a local team. Um, so, well, mo I always play for like local teams, like Colts teams kind of thing. Um, and I played with a local team that was a Colts league um, for like six, seven years. But on and off, uh, I'd be playing for like, there was a local team as well that has their own academy-ish thing, um, which are like a few divisions below the conference. So they're still not a bad team, but like they would be around and about. And I played there here and there, but injuries stopped me from being able to really push that very hard. So I just kind of stuck to playing for like a local Colts team. Um, which then resulted in me playing in all different different positions. But when I started um, getting taller, I realised that I had the reflex of someone that was small, so I could move around quite quickly. But And I also had the kind of um, ability and the, the knowledge for the game to be able to play in goal really well. And um, Yeah, I think it, it worked out quite well for me playing as a goalkeeper because now I feel like I'm not like really, really tall, but I'm tall enough to you know, be a, be a decent goalkeeper in a full-side goal. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm seeing in goal yet, so that'd be interesting. Yeah, we should for one of the charity matches. If there's a goal, if there's, if there's um, a goalkeeper space free, then I should definitely see if I can fill in for some minutes. That's for sure. Yeah, you, you two should have a bit of a penalty shootout. Oh, that'd be great! Yeah, like yeah both goalkeepers play. both play play out on pitch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Actually, yeah, I think that we should definitely get that sorted at some point. For sure. Yeah. Thought that out. Yeah, I look forward to it. That'd be good. Yeah, because. Well, I've been mostly on pitch, so haven't uh, been doing many saves really. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, with goalkeeping, I think you've all. I think the best goalkeepers are ones that always have that ability in them. Though they can just stick on some gloves, and they're already quite good. And I think you probably got that ability. Likewise, I think I might do a little bit. Where you'll get the gloves, you'll get balls kicked at you, and you kind of already know what you're doing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I agree with that. Certainly, yes. Um. Right, got another one, have we? Yep, we do. Um, so the next one is, um, what is your main target for TikTok right now? Oh, that's an interesting one because it, it changes. Um, because obviously, if you told me, if you asked me that question in January this year, I'd have thought, oh, maybe I could get to a million by the end of the year. But somehow I managed to smash <laughs> that and, and double it. Um, so I think right now, if you could like, if you could read my mind and and, and find exactly the one thing on TikTok um, that's on that's almost my goal for the year, like what I would want to get by the end of the year, for example, ideally it would be amazing to get four million followers. Obviously, that's going to be a bit difficult to get, but I think it's possible. The fact I've got two million already and it's been halfway through the year, I think it is possible. Mm. Um, and I also think I want to get to the point where I can start. Um, making YouTube videos and start um, using all these different platforms and getting a following over there. So if I could get like, like I don't know, like 50k on YouTube, um, I haven't even started really posting on it. But if I could maybe start by the end of the year and get to 50k, that'd be insane. I'd really like that. Mm. Mm. YouTube is more difficult to get get subscribers, isn't it? Isn't it? So? Yeah, so it's a completely different platform. It's a different way of. Of posting videos and, and getting followers and, and fans but yeah i reckon i could smash that eventually yeah no definitely we're, we're working on it at the moment cal we with the podcast with our with our channel so but it, it's coming along coming along nicely isn't it? yeah well we've we've got our um, one and i've got my own one haven't i so yeah, yeah no i'm not doing too bad on youtube myself no that's it yeah. it can be a difficult platform to, to master but once you do it it can be really satisfying can't it Mm. It is, yeah. Um, I mean, how many subscribers have we got, Sai, on YouTube? Um, I think it's, we're close to 1,400, and that's only it's only in a few weeks, so it's not too bad. Yeah, it's, it's been impressive for a new account. It's, it's actually really good. Yeah, yeah. so, so it's, it's yeah. Going, going all right, actually. <laughs> yeah. Funny joke is, um, you, you've act, we've actually climbed uh, faster than, uh, than my actual channel itself. Really? Yeah, because I've had my channel, uh, my personal one, since 2018. Yeah. And I've got 18,000 subscribers. Well, that, that's, wow. that's, that's decent, yeah, that's good. YouTube, that's pretty impressive. It is, yeah, it's difficult on YouTube. I, I think Instagram's quite difficult as well, isn't it? Yeah, Instagram and YouTube are, like, very difficult. You have to have, like, a niche and, and something that you kind of know what to do um, and get views and followers for um, to do well on both of those platforms, for sure. Yeah, mm. no, it's not it's not easy. So, who's your um, who's your favourite TikToker then, Jace? Who do you, what videos do you watch regularly? 
Uh, other, than, other than me and Cal, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, I was going to say, yeah, you two definitely spread to the mark. <laughs> um, I don't know, I think, I don't really have, uh, I think when it comes to TikTok, I, when I've watched through it and scrolled through, it doesn't seem to be a single creator that I'll watch. So there won't be one creator that makes like similar videos, almost the way that I do. I, I don't find any kind of similar people to how I record and, and upload videos. I often find videos that are either like football related, like football highlights, or excuse the sound, I've got a drill going on. <laughs> um, uh, I'd say possibly like, I think people like, you, you know, people that do football videos, football highlights, freestylers. So like Ben, you know, the foot, he does, yeah. he does Ben Black. Um, I think also if it, if it comes to comedy, I like all these different, like even Comedy Central have their own TikTok. And yeah. You get people like Impractical Jokers. I always watch an Impractical Jokers um, highlight if it comes up on my For You page. It's just stuff like that, just stuff that kind of pops in, pops into my For You page and I'll, I'll watch it. And if it's funny, I'll, I'll, I'll like it. Yeah. And I've got kind of a mixed For You page, I'd say. Yeah, no, it's good. I'll tell you who's um, coming on our podcast first is Jack Charlton. He's quite similar to you, isn't he? He is, actually. And his, his videos always come up on my um, For You page as well, because obviously I follow him and he follows me, kind of thing, as his friend. Yeah, they're always very similar. And I think we, we definitely use each other as in, inspiration as well, which is really good to hear. And I think that's almost the, one of the biggest factors of TikTok is using other people's inspiration for your own work. And you can get quite far just from that, so... Yeah, definitely. He's good. He's, I like Jack. He's a uh, he's a decent lad. Looking forward to him coming on firstly. So that'd be uh, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, it should be awesome. So, um, what are you what are you looking to do in the future, Jace? What's your, say okay, in three four years time? Where would you want to be? What would you want to be doing? That's also a very difficult question. It's, it's always one that like people will ask, and I'll, I'll be completely stumped by it because. I would really know, but I think at this moment of time, I think I've been more certain than I ever have been before. Uh, but I don't know if certain is the right word because I still don't know what I'm looking for. But I'd say I'd love to just stay on social media and stay making these videos that make people laugh and smile and, and happy. And if in three or four years' time I migrate over to YouTube or something, then so be it. I don't really mind. As, as long as I'm making videos the way that I like making them, and I think that that's exactly what my goal is, and that's what I want to be doing, obviously, in three or four years' time. So you, you're looking, you're looking um, for that as you know, as, as your income and all the rest of it. I'd say so. Yeah, I mean, like I think even in, in, as the time being is now, um, I'm making a decent kind of like living from it. So I'd love to be able to continue doing that for the years to come. Yeah, fair play. That's brilliant. That's great. I, lo I love seeing it when uh, people it works for people and all the rest of it, and, and when they're doing really well, especially when they're, they're nice people like yourself. You know, it's. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I love it. I, I try to help anybody out that I can and I you know there's a lot of people get jealous don't they things like that but I'm the opposite I'd, I'd love to see people do well and everything yeah so. I, I think it's important to to well, I know when you say people can get jealous but I think it's important to look up to people that have done well and understand why they did well rather than just blame it on jealousy and blame it on luck kind of thing with all these people that are, that are doing well and you're and, and people aren't it's, it's at the end of the day it's mostly just work ethic if you get that work ethic sorted it doesn't matter how much luck people are getting. If you get that work ethic, then every kind of bit of luck and every bit of information that you will take, you'll you'll use profitably, and, and you'll get a, a following or a, a certain amount of views from it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You got another one there, Carol? Yeah, uh, got quite a few. Um, before before that, um, um, put some things on my story on Instagram, and I think you've seen it, Jason, haven't you? Yeah, the what the the um the drawings of the different yeah, teams. I did some drawings lately. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No. I, I noticed your Southampton one. Uh, I thought I'd give you a reply saying that's kind of like a good, the best drawing kind of thing. Because uh, <laughs> obviously, as a Southampton supporter, it's nice to see when people make little bits of art for the club. It's so it's, it's a very small team as well. You don't have a big following like Man U or anything at Southampton. So to to have little bits of art like that, it's, it's quite sweet and quite nice. Nice thing to see. Yeah, just take do them. Have you seen it, Simon? Mm. What you, the drawing the sound, What the recent one? Yeah, I, I, uh, I put them on my story on Instagram. Oh no, I, no, I haven't seen it. I'm going to be truthful. I haven't seen it. I'm, I probably wouldn't even know how to get on people's stories on Instagram. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there eventually. It's just... <laughs> <That's it. laughs> You'll find it. <laughs> oh dear! Every, every time Keely comes around. I say to her, oh, can you show me how to do this? Can you show me how to do that? So he's gradually getting there. So 
Eventually you'll work out, I'm sure of it. Yeah, when I, when I get to about 60, maybe. But. <laughs> Zimmer frame as well. That's it, yeah, got my Zimmer frame out. So. Oh, God. The walking <laughs> stick and all, yeah. <laughs> oh, crikey. I've uh, got a loft if you've got one. I know, yeah, when I, when I go up north now, Cal's got one waiting for me, so I should be all right. Oh, um, great. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Um, so yeah, this one's um, just based on um, things in general. So, uh, what job are you hoping to get in the future then, Jason? Oh, I mean, like, if, if things stay as they are, like I said earlier, I'd love to stay within social media. I'd love to stay making videos and making people happy from my own account. But if in the future, you know, maybe ITV or BBC say like, hey, would you like to be a, 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 like presenting a new show? Do you want to be a presenter or something? <laughs> or and, and make people smile that way instead. Um, I would always want to take that on board. And the thing is with something like that is I can always do TikTok as well as that. I can do that alongside it. Um, so I'd love to do some some kind of, uh, I don't know, not, it doesn't even have to be presenting, just being in a video industry where I can make people smile. That's, that's what I'd, I'd love to say. Mm -hmm. oh, brilliant. That's great. Um, okay. Yeah. What is your highest um, TikTok video in views? I had a look at this yesterday and it went up a lot more than I thought it did. Um, it's a video that's got 16 point something million. Um, it's, I don't know if you've seen the what would you do videos that I have on my, my account. I don't know if you've seen them. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, it's one of the, my original ones, the one where um, I drop a five pound note and an old lady picks it up and pretends that it's that they, they didn't steal it kind of thing. And that's the one that's got uh, just over 16 million views. That's so far my highest viewed video, but I'm sure that I'll get some more that will surpass that hopefully sometime soon. Yeah, mm. That's brilliant, Christ. That's good. And Keely did one with you, didn't she, Simon? Yeah, yeah. Me and Keely done a heading one that headed into a bin. Um, that's what, that's, I think that's on 14 million cow, isn't it? I think something like that. 14.2, I think. 14.2 mm -hmm. million now. It's mad, isn't it? It's just mad how it just goes up. So mm. It's crazy, yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's like small things like that do that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's, it's seeing all these numbers and stuff and realising that people will obviously enjoy your videos and stuff. It's, it, it just makes you feel so happy. It makes you feel like you're doing something right kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It actually gives you a buzz when you look at the video and it's sort of like going up sort of a thousand sort of every two minutes you, or whatever. You're, you're like, wow, what is going on here? You know, it's... Yeah, and I think it's really difficult to get your head around the fact that obviously every single one is one separate person. And you think every yeah. time you refresh it, if it goes up by 10, you think that 10 separate people just watched yeah. your video and either liked it or enjoyed it or shared it. I think that's, cra that's crazy. It's, it's really difficult to get my head around. Yeah, no, it's mad, isn't it? It's mad. You're saying you're a Southampton sport. My mum sports Southampton, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, because my um, my granddad um, used to support them. He was, you know, he was well into Southampton, so my mum followed it on. So oh, I didn't, so I didn't realise I supported Southampton. Yeah, how come you don't support Southampton then? <laughs> um, well, I um, my mum and dad bought a um, bought a pub. Uh, like a pub, restaurant, uh, B and B place just outside of Tunbridge Wells, when I was about seventeen, and I when we went into the pub, it was literally when we had the football on, it was literally four Chelsea sports. Literally, oh, okay. everybody sported Chelsea, and basically I didn't have a choice. It was like either I sport Chelsea, I get thrown out of my own house, basically. So, <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> so, so I had to um, I had to end up sporting Chelsea. So uh, just. Just to keep in with everybody. <laughs> Must be, yeah, no, I understand that. I, I can I can explain my story of how I support Southampton if you want. Yeah, um, definitely go for it. It's quite funny because like um no one in my family and no one I'm really like that close to in terms of like family or mum or dad support any team. Um none of them play football or, or support football at all. Um so I was kind of left to my own accord really. And ever since I started growing up I always loved playing football. I'd always be invited out to play football in the streets and, and uh, obviously in school time and stuff, um I'd be playing football. Um, so I kind of had to kind of learn to, to support a team eventually because I, I hate the people that say I don't really support a team I just kind of like just watch it because like you need to have a team to support to get that true emotion in the game in, in my opinion anyway um, so I, I, I think it was when I was um, it must have been 11 we'll say like 10 or 11 years old when I started probably playing playing football for like a team kind of thing even though yeah. it was only like under 11 so it was still a team um, I, I, obviously, obviously everyone will talk about football and they'll talk about the Premier League and they'll talk about all this and all that 
And um, I, I obviously felt left out because they would all be supporting a team and I'd be kind of just like, yeah, I just like football, like playing it. Um, so I kind of started playing games like FIFA, which you probably definitely have heard of, um, and games like Football Manager. So yeah. I started playing things like that and I'd get to know some of these teams. And on Football Manager especially, I can remember one of my mates saying at the time, saying, oh, you should pick Southampton for the career mode because they've got a really good academy. They've got lots of good young players. Okay. You can make a good team. So yeah, I started yeah. playing football manager and I started um, playing in Southampton. And obviously yeah. because they've got a good academy, I'd work my way up. I'd play career mode for hours and hours. I'd really enjoy it, trying to get to Southampton, to the Premier League. Because at the time, they're only in League One. So I'd always have to start in League One and work my way up to Championship yeah. and Premier yeah. League. Um, and then I'd always try and like see how far I could go if I could win a Champions League on football manager at Southampton. And that was always my goal. And it was from playing this career mode that I got to know all the players. I got to kind of like, yeah. not fall in love with the team, but I got to know the team. And as soon as I started watching them in real life, that's when I started falling in love with them. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and that's kind of the story. It's a bit of a weird one because obviously, like, I don't have any kind of roots. In fact, if anything, it would make sense for me to support Cambridge United because that's where I'm from. Yeah. Which I do. I, I, I used to go to all their games. I almost used to go every week when I was younger. Someone used to take me. Um, and I still do support them whenever they get promoted, like they did last year. I always support it. Now they're in League One, which is quite funny because that's where I started supporting Southampton. Yeah, um, yeah. But you, you know Leon Lee quite well, then. Yeah, well, I don't know him, but yeah, I, I, used to, I don't think he even plays for. I don't think he plays for Cambridge anymore, does he? No, not anymore. No, most of Leon. I've known him for years. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah, no, Leon Lake was a really good centre back. I think. Um, yeah, it was. He was, he was captain and centre back for Cambridge. I, yeah. I think. I think he's gone. He's gone. Has he gone Port Vale now? I think. Possibly. He's got. He's definitely got. Yeah, I think he's definitely gone to the team like Port Vale. I can't remember exactly where. Yeah, he's been really into it. But now, like with uh, trying to support Southampton, Cambridge at the same time, I'll, I'll often find myself looking at Southampton because obviously now in the Premier League they're a lot more televised, so it's a lot more easier to watch their games. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a good story. That it's different. Yeah. Right? It's, a, it's a definitely a unique way of supporting a team. That's for sure. I don't know anyone else who supported the team from the way that I've just explained. Mm. Where do you think they're going to end up, Southampton, this year, then? Oh, God, don't even get me started. The fact that Danny Ings has rejected his new contract, uh, the fact that our, our owner doesn't even want to put any money into our club so he can't get any new signings, it's going to be a really difficult year for us. A very mm -hmm. difficult year. The only way that I think we could get put a result is if one of our smaller players, whether that be a, someone that we've just got from our youth or kind of a newly signed player or, or someone who's come back on loan, we need one of those players to perform really well to fill in the gaps that we've got in our team. And mm. if they fill in those gaps right, we could have a, a somewhat sustainable team and we could probably finish mid-table. But if for whatever reason our team collapses, even if that takes a couple of injuries, um, if that means or if we don't get any new players because obviously we don't have the opportunity of buying uh, anyone because of our owner not wanting to put any money into the club, then it could go really, really wrong. So I really hope it doesn't. But I'm going to be optimistic and say we'll finish about mid-table. Let's say like 10th. That's what I'm yeah. going to say. Right. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Sorry, Cap. That's all right. You at all. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, I think they're going to have a... So, so yeah, of course, I'm, I'm a different team to, you know, Chelsea and Southampton. Yeah. Because my team's in the championship. Of course, yeah. Yeah, mine's Cardiff, and we uh, we finished eight, uh, eighth last year. Is that just the, out of the um, uh, playoff spots, isn't it? Yes, uh, we finished uh, about seven points adrift. That's not far off. I reckon you could hit it this season. Mm, yeah, we, we've signed a couple of players. We've signed James Collins from Luton. He's a top-quality striker. Um, we yeah. won't talk about Luton. As a Cambridge fan, Luton. <laughs> Yeah. They're our biggest rivals, well, apart from Peterborough. <laughs> yeah, Peterborough's in the championship as well. Yeah, they are. They're doing quite well as well at the moment. They got recently promoted, I think. Mm. Yeah, uh, they came second, Peterborough. Mm. Yeah, they did. They were a good team. Got, they've got a top quality striker in Johnson Clark Harris. They've always had good strikers, haven't they? They had, the, oh, I can't remember mm. what his name was, but they had another really good striker that got them promoted into the championship. They scored like 30 goals in the season. I can't remember who it was, but yeah. It was really Rages. Good. Um, but of course, where did right? So I'm gonna ask you this, Simon. Where do you think Chelsea's finishing? Well, I, everybody, everybody's asking for my Premier predictions, and I think it's I think it's difficult to to say at the moment because there is going to be so many signings, big signings, I think, coming up shortly, and I just think it all depends who signs who. 
um, who the big teams were. I mean, I, I truly believe it's going to be um, Man City, Man United, Chelsea, Liverpool again. I think they're going to be the four. But it all depends who they sign, who the four sign. I think it's going to make it a lot of difference. I mean, Man United have started a little bit early in the transfer market. Um, I think they don't want to make the same mistakes they did last time uh, where they left it too late. But um, it depends on Chelsea. If Chelsea signed Haaland and um, maybe one or two more, then I think they can, can, you know, they can give it a go. But if, if they don't sign um, any top players, then I think they're going to be sort of like third or fourth again, in my opinion. Uh, well, it's it's tr it's tricky with teams because you know, yeah, because Manchester United signed Sancho finally after two years. Yeah. Um. So you have to be a bit cautious on United this season because you, who knows where they could finish? They finished second last year. Will they finish a bit more lower? Will they fin will they actually go for it? Yeah, it, it, I think it depends who they do sign. I mean, I think. You know, with Luke Shaw, he, he must be absolutely buzzing at the moment. So he's gonna he's gonna take that back in, back into the camp, which will you know get everybody else <laughs> feeling good. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's little things like that that can help. Um, mm. And I I just think uh, I think if Man United sign Varane at centre half, and then they've got Sancho, and then sign one more, I think um, I think they will they'll be pushing as well, definitely. I think it's difficult. Man United always seem to get all these big signings, but they never really seem to do that much with them. Like, even with Pogba and stuff, he's a great player, don't get me wrong, but he, he kind of got into the Man United team and doesn't even suit their play style really at all. Um, and even players like some of the new new signings, like they even got Tellez, a, a left... Sorry, I, so I keep on getting notifications from someone calling me. I'm trying to... Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, so even like Tellez, a left-back, they don't even need a left-back. They've got Shaw. They didn't even need to buy him, really. That's oh. honest. Um, so they always seem to get all these big signings. It never really works out for them. But um, I don't know. Maybe they could change the tide a little bit. Maybe they could um, get a signing that really makes an impact. Because like Bruno Fernandes did exactly that last season. So they did. Yeah. Then, then they signed Van der Beek, didn't they? Again, they've got Fernandes in there. Why did they need to sign him? They, yeah, exactly. They, they're playing the same position. You know, it's it's it, it is a weird one. But um, yeah, I think they'll be there now. So who do you think is going to win, Jace? And, and you, Cal? Who do you two think? Uh, do, do you want to go first, Cal? You go first, Jason. Okay, uh, I'll. You kind of have to go for City. I think. I think they've just got too much money at this stage where they can. They even if a player flops for them, they can just buy another one. Um, so they're at the stage now where they're always going to do well one way or another. Um, I think City would. So I'll, I'll do my top five. Let's say if you want what I, what I think would top five would be. So I'd say top would be City. I think second will be Man U. They're Right, I keep on getting caught. I'm going to turn off notifications after That's I say that's right. So I stop, stop talking about. Um, so yeah, then uh, Liverpool. Then fourth, I'll go for Chelsea. Then fifth, I'll go for Arsenal. But it could be Leicester, one or the other. Mm. So I'll, go for, I'll go for Arsenal. Good shout with Arsenal. I think they're going to be up there next year. They've got a lot of young players, and if those players uh, prove themselves, I think it could be really good. And, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Arsenal's a bit thingy at the moment because yeah, they had. a what would you say their season was last year? It was pretty terrible, wasn't it? Wasn't the best, was it? Yeah, no, it wasn't the best. Um, I yeah. can't remember. Where, where was they finish in the end? It, where was it, Si? 11th, wasn't it? Or something like that, is it? Yeah, it wasn't good. They started off quite badly, which I think obviously dropped the performance quite a lot. Mm. I mean, they've been linked to James Madison, Arsenal. Oh, yeah, they have been, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they'll do well. I mean, Arteta... The only reason why they ended up where they were, they might have been higher than the length, actually. I feel I've got it wrong. But um, where they were is that, I mean, they had a really, really bad start. And then they were just chasing all the time. And when, and when you're chasing, you're under pressure and everything else. And, and it's, it's not good. But I think this year, if he has a good start this year, then he's going to be up there and, and, he, and he'll stay up there. I think, um, I think they've done the right thing keeping Arteta because I think he's got his own way of playing and it sometimes takes a bit of time to for everybody to buy into that so I think fair play to Arsenal keeping him because I think he could come good I really do mm. yeah 
Uh, Arsenal finished eighth. I just seen. Yeah, so yeah, I thought it was a bit high. Yeah, yeah, they, they finished uh, quite well. You wouldn't expect them to finish that low, would you? You'd think they'll be like a. They've got to be top four, haven't they? Be You'd there. think so. With some of the tip, some of the players they've got, they've got Bamiang, they've got Lacazette. Like they're really good players. They've they've obviously had some world class strikers and, and midfielders and defenders in their time. So I'm surprised they haven't been finishing higher the last few years. Mm. I mean, you can't pronounce him, can you, Sai? But Bamiang. <laughs> I actually can't. I just, there's a there's a couple of names I just can't. It just does my head in. But uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't like talking about him at all. <laughs> It'd be even worse if uh, Chelsea got him instead of Arsenal. Oh God! Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to give him a nickname. I think Bang, <laughs> banger or something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, God. <laughs> I mean, we we came up with some nicknames like you know what was that Italy one immobile? Oh yeah, immobile. <laughs> oh dear, yeah. I mean, we won't talk about Italy anymore, though. Let's let's not talk about Italy. No, <laughs> no, that's, that's why I'm still sort of keeping it keeping out that everybody's been talking about that final, haven't they? And it's just like you you, you just you can talk about it as much as you like. It's not going to change it, is it? So unfortunately. Well, a lot of these fans keep starting a petition off. Have you seen it? Yeah, about replaying the game or something. Yeah, it is. I mean, that is never going to happen in a minute. No, that's, just salty. that's not going to happen. Yeah, that's just people not being able to take a defeat. Yeah. yeah. Even though it was, um, even though what I saw of highlights um, was, you know, some wrong decisions against it, wasn't it? There are yeah. a few decisions that are a little bit soft. I don't, I don't know if the referee really gave the right decisions here and there, but then again, neither is any. Referees are just human at the end of the day. And I know there is VAR, but I don't really think there was actually any like really bad challenges that would result in VAR really changing what the outcome was. I think we just need to take the defeat and, and use all the experience that we've taken from this tournament and use it for the next one. Because let's be honest, if we were to win a World Cup, that's so much better than the Euros. It would, it would be a hate to waste a good team on, on the Euros if we could win a World Cup with it. So we'll see. Yeah, no, definitely. I think going on to that about the decisions, um, there is one, though, that I'll, I'll, I wasn't happy with. Um, Jorginho, when he, went over, when he went over the top of the ball, he, he got the ball, but he followed through over the top and he knew what he was doing to Grealish. And I think VAR should have got involved in that one. As much as I think that they should have, right, they've, they've, VAR have been a bit weird with um, that kind of, uh, those challenges where they'll get the ball first and follow through. For example, I've seen somewhere that happens, and I don't know if it's because the slow motion replay, for whatever reason, whenever you see the replay, it makes it look a lot worse. Yeah. It results in it looking like they've probably gone into them with the studs, whereas in reality, they might have just kicked the ball and tried to push their leg away from them to obviously avoid any kind of harsh contact. I think it's difficult. I think one referee could say something completely different to another with that situation. Yeah, I think it's difficult. That, that, that is the problem, isn't it? Just, um, everybody has different views, don't they? Look, like I say, they are human, so they're going to. So, well, sure. Well, a lot of referees pressure, aren't you? Because you know you got you got these you, you got referees running in the middle of a pitch, and then you got you, you under a lot of pressure to get the right decision. Mm. Yeah. You know, they're going to get a lot of backlash for it. Oh yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. You got any more counts? We're nearly, we're nearly there. So, oh, we've got one more for you, Jason. If you, yeah, let's, hear let's hear it. All right, calm down. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> get a bit excited. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Um, are you? Um, well, this is a good one. Are you prepared to work with other comp like uh, sporting companies on TikTok? I'd love to, and I have done already so far. Um, not like oh. big ones, not, not like Adidas or Nike or anything, but I've worked with some small independent companies and made some videos for them. And um, yeah, so it seems to be going quite well. I'd love to do some more in the future, whether that be for like a big company like Nike or Adidas or even just a small one, starting off a company, a new business. Um, I'd lo I love the idea of like getting like a, almost like a share in like a, a company that does like goalkeeper gloves and like try and promote them while also um, it being my own company at the same time a little bit. I'd love something like that. Like, that'd just be like something, like, something perfect for me. I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've worked. And I've, I've um, it's outrageous how many sponsors I've got right now. And I think really? I've, how many I've got? Did I tell you? 
How many have you got? Okay. Yeah. I've got eight sponsors at the moment. Oh, are they, what kind of sponsors are they? Like shirt sponsors? Are they like drink sponsors? Are they all sorts? Yeah, I've got a couple of uh, shirt companies. I've got, um, I've got a couple of goalkeeping companies. Just mostly like that. That's really good to hear. Yeah, yeah, nice one. Uh, that's what I aim for, obviously, in the future. Hopefully. Yeah, um, if you like, Jason, I'll message you some of, um, some companies that would be happy to work with you. I think. Yeah, I'll see what they say. Yeah, and yeah, no, that sounds awesome. I'd love to see it. Some uh, that, I, that I'm working with, and I'm sure they'll work with you very well. Love to hear it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, get me involved. Yeah, I've, I've got a big sponsor as well. Really that? big uh, mobility scooters. They've uh, they called me and said oh, I'd see if I could do a few videos for them. So. <laughs> Jeez, okay, fair enough. I mean, <laughs> you may as well. Business, business, you know. I, I said to her, I've only got, I've got a few more years yet, and then, then, I'll, then I'll start doing it, do you know what I mean? So. Of course, of course. How long have you, uh, you been working then? Well, long have you been working for them? Yeah, quite a well, long time long? now. Yeah, quite a long time. Yeah, I'm going to bring the videos out soon. When we're going to be flying up, flying up the road in them, do you know what I mean? So... <laughs> Yeah. Put some rocket boosters on them or something. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, Have you got another one side to finish off? Um, okay, just a real quick one. Favourite player of all time, Jace? Uh, I'm, considering I support Southampton, I kind of have to go for Matt Letizia, don't I? Fair play, yeah. I'll tell you what, that man can take a free kick, that's for sure. He can take any kind of kick. Have you seen some of the goals he scored? Crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah no, I'd, I'd have to go with him. But if if you could change that to current um, player, and we'll say not Southampton, so that I can obviously just be like a bit honest, uh, <laughs> uh, I'd say probably someone like Haaland has a good potential. And I think, in my opinion, Haaland's going to be a better player than Mbappe, only because Mbappe's going to get all this experience in in the French league, where you'll play against teams that maybe aren't so big. Whereas players like Haaland, I think the German league is a lot more competitive. And you get a lot more bigger teams, which means that scoring goals in these German leagues is obviously going to be a lot more difficult than in the French league. So I think ha Haaland is definitely someone. He's he's going to be like Drogba, I reckon. He's going to be a very big kind of target man, goal scoring threat, and could easily sign for a big team like Real Madrid or something and, and score some big goals in big tournaments and possibly even win them tournaments. So did you say Chelsea then or Real Madrid? No. Right, anywhere. Oh, uh, oh, 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 Chelsea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's wanted by quite a lot of teams so I, 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 yeah I'd love it if he signed Chelsea that's for sure but yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll get someone calling yeah, me is that, uh, is that... Yeah. <laughs> yeah what's that sorry all, is that all yours then Simon yeah yeah all done yeah brilliant yeah, yeah all good so yeah thank you guys for uh, watching this podcast thank you Jason for coming on thank you for your time it's absolutely fine, mate. It's been a pleasure to be here, and you two seem like amazing people. I can't wait to see how this podcast grows, and and I look forward to seeing where it goes to. So yeah, oh, thanks, Joe. Good, good luck with everything you do. I mean, you're absolutely smashing it at the moment, and and you deserve it. You're, you know, I met you the other day, and you're a really nice lad. Do you know what I mean? So you deserve everything you get, and uh, obviously wish you all the best, and hope it carries on going mad for you. I really do. I appreciate it, mate. Likewise, 100k is a big achievement, so you should definitely go out and celebrate it. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see it. Yeah, um, brilliant. Cheers, guys. Uh, yeah, no good luck. Thanks for having me on. Good luck with future videos and keep smashing them out. Awesome. I appreciate the support, mate. Likewise with yourself, Cal. You've been doing, doing really well recently as well, so. Yeah, but I've slowed down a bit, but I'm all right with that. <laughs> that's all good. That happens, happens. As long as I've got to my target of a million, that's all right. Exactly. You've smashed that already, so. Mm. But yeah, yeah, thank you, Jason, for coming on again. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. That's all right. Thanks for having me. And do that. Take it easy, have a good one.